Yatra to pause as Rahul heads to Cambridge. Is Rahul Yatra on track or trembling? Will Congress and India gain from Yatra? Big focus on News Track. It's been 39 days since Rahul Gandhi embarked on his Bharat Jodo Nya Yatra. He's covered about 11 states and is currently travelling through Uttar Pradesh, where his outburst against a journalist has triggered a storm. RG is facing flak for referring continuously to Ashwarya Rai Bachchan while talking about the Ram Mandir. The irony is Ashwarya Rai wasn't at the Ram Mandir Prantavdishta. He didn't say it once. He keeps saying it again and again. Nobody seems to be telling him she wasn't there. The Congress says the Yatra is not for electoral gain. But the fact is, has the Yatra served any purpose at all? We'll have a big news, down, news track showdown in just a moment. Before that, take a look at this report. On the second leg of his nationwide tour, Rahul Gandhi is in the Belvedere state of Hindi Heartland. But the Congress leader's journey through Uttar Pradesh has stirred up controversy due to his remarks. Media ke aap, naam kya aapka? Ha? Aap shri Prashad ji hai. Aapke malik ka kya naam hai? Aapke malik ka kya naam hai? Take this for instance. In Rai Bareilly, his family stronghold, Rahul Gandhi has countered a reporter's question about his caste and that of his bosses, resulting in the journalist being heckled by party supporters. The BJP in UP wasted no time in responding. It shared the video and condemned Rahul Gandhi's questioning of the reporter as disgraceful. During his Bharat Jodo Nyayatra in UP, Rahul Gandhi also targeted the Bachchan family, using the opportunity to make a political statement regarding the OBCs. Ashwara Rai Bachchan did not attend the Pran Pratishtha, but Rahul Gandhi made her a central point of his speeches, sparking a trending hashtag regarding Ashwara Rai Bachchan. In Amethi, the Gandhi sign remarked that he had witnessed inebriated individuals lying on the streets in Varanasi, the Lok Sabha constituency of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. हजारों युवा शराब पिए सड़क पर लेटे हुए वाराणसी में भाजा चल रहा है शराब पी पी के पूरा आपके आपके युवा वाराणसी में नाच रहे वो यूपी में जहां अभी हाईएस्ट इन्वेस्टमेंट आया है जहां प्रधानमंत्री ने हजारों करोड़ का पूंजी निवेश किया है जहां नौकरी के अवसर मिल रहे हैं और वहां ये कह रहे हैं कि पूरा यूपी का नौजवान आजकल नशे में डूबा हुआ है राहुल गांधी जी शेम ऑन यू देश आप पर शर्म कर रहा है कृपया करके अपनी भाषा को सुधारिए उत्तर प्रदेश की युवा पीढ़ी मेहनत कश है उत्तर प्रदेश के युवा पीढ़ी का कौशल पूरा देश पूरा विश्व मानता है और प्रदेश का काशी का इस प्रकार से अपमान जो उन्होंने किया है उनको हम माफी की अपेक्षा उनसे नहीं करते माफी वो मांगता है जिसमें संस्कार हो जिसमें इस बात की शर्म हो जो राहुल गांधी में नहीं है बिफोर द यात्रा एनकाउंटर्ड पोलिटिकल ऑब्स्टिकल्स इन वेस्ट बंगाल विद अलाई ममता बैनर्जी डिसमिसिंग इट एज फोटो अपॉर्चुनिटी एंड चैलेंजिंग कांग्रेस टू विन मोर देन फोर्टी सीट इन लोकसभा इलेक्शन बांग्ला प्रोग्राम करते इंडियन अलायस एक बार तो इनफरमेशन टा दे अमुक दिन थे के प्रोग्राम करते जा ची बांग्ला है ए ही रूट दिए आर्थो किचु चाहिए ना क्या एक बार जोनो जाना ही नहीं आमे जानते ही पड़े नहीं तुम बांग्ला नाम बची ऊपर की लेने का नो बुकेर पोटा थक तो देखता हूँ ऊपर ते लाभ दे गिये बीजेपी के हरिये शो बेनार्शिक ये हरिये शो 
রাজস্থানে গিয়ে হারিয়ে এসো যেটা জায়গা হেরেছো Previously, the JDU had exited the India Alliance aligned with the BJP. Except for the RJD and the left, no other ally within the India coalition has so far joined Gandhi's Nyayatra. This could be the worst time for you to leave headquarters and go for a Yatra. Yatra was to be done maybe six months, a year before, two years before. Now is the time when you should be meeting with your strategic allies. You need to raise resources. You need to finalize your candidates. You need to fire fight on daily basis. When you are needed at headquarters, you are in field. When you were needed to be in field, they were, then you were sitting in Delhi. I don't know who advises them. Promoted as an ideological movement, Rahul Gandhi's Nyayatra, meanwhile, is taking a break from February 26th to March 1st. During this time, the Congress leaders slated to visit Cambridge for lectures and meetings in New Delhi. For now, however, Rahul Gandhi's tour appears to have provided fresh fodder for the BJP ahead of the Lok Sabha elections. Bureau Report, India Today. The Bharat Jodo Nyay Yatra has so far covered about 4,000 kilometers, cutting across 39 days. 11 states have been covered, about 75 interactions between Rahul Gandhi and different members of the youth, the SCST, OBC, MSME communities. The question is, has Rahul Gandhi's Bharat Jodo Nyay Yatra been a success or has it been a flop? He got some good traction during his Bharat Jodo Yatra, that was phase one. Was this Yatra badly timed? We've had uh, desertions in the India Alliance in states like Bihar, uh, Mamta Banerjee deciding to fight alone in West Bengal. So has it all been counterproductive or has it served some purpose? To talk about this, we're joined on this broadcast. I want to welcome first. Uh, Suprashrinne, chairperson of the social media and digital platforms team of the Congress party, also the party's national spokesperson. Sayyid Zafar Islam represents the Bharatiya Janata Party. Rajdeep Sardesai joins us on this broadcast, consulting editor of the India Today Group. We have Rashid Kidwai who tracks the ins and outs of everything that's going on in the Congress party. And for two different kinds of perspectives, I have Sanjay Jha and Rajat Sethi. I want to go across by asking Suprash Renet first to explain to everyone watching at this time why you think the Bharat Jodo Nyay Yatra has been a success. On what parameters do you think this Yatra has succeeded? I can count many on which uh, the Yatra has bombed India Alliance being in tatters, allies leaving you. You know, it hasn't worked out in terms of momentum, especially in comparison to the first Yatra. But you can begin by explaining why you think it's been a success. Suprash Renet. Thanks very much for having me on the show and I discount everything that you said in your last sentence and I'll tell you why. The media may not cover it, it doesn't really matter. We are not at the mercy of mainstream media to cover or not cover the Yatra. The mainstream media had discounted large parts of the Bharat Jodo Yatra as well. I was on, I was on big channels uh, including some of the times on your channel and your shows when controversy is around the uh, Yatra that the BJP wanted to propagate was covered but that's not, not the concern here. What is a Yatra? Whether it's a yatra on, the, on foot or the kind of yatra that Rahul Gandhi is doing, traversing across the east to the west of this country. It is a means to bypass media, social media, all of that and correct, connect directly with people. When he is walking or when he is uh, going, through a, going through a state or a city, he is meeting people, he is talking to them, he is having conversations, he is listening to them. And I think as politicians and including myself, I think we've all ceased to listen to people. As people in public life, we need to listen to people in the 21st century. I think that's the message of his Yatra, both for Bharat Jodo and Bharat Jodo Nyay Yatra. I will very briefly, and because you began with me, I want to set the context just for people who are watching this. Why did we call it the Bharat? Bharat Jodo Nyay Yatra and not simply Bharat Jodo Yatra like we did previously. I think in the previous Yatra, the message was one of unifying people. And I think we succeeded to a large extent. To my amazement, love was never spoke about. Mohabbat ki koi baat hi nahi karta tha. Aaj nafrat ke bazaar mein mohabbat ki dukaan ki baat ho rahi hai, which is a big thing. I think in this Yatra, uh, we are going into an election where a government elected with a brute majority 
has failed on every economic parameter, has failed the people of this country, has failed the, uh, the, the future of our youth. The demographic uh, dividend is very soon going to turn into a demographic disaster. The government is in denial as far as joblessness, as far as paper leaks, as far as high prices, as far as income inequality, as far as representation is concerned. And which is why thus Sal Se and Nyayika Danj Sekar, we decided Nyay ka vakt hai okay. and the five nyay that Rahul Gandhi has spoken about, the five pillars of justice. And to that extent, the kind of conversations that we've had, the kind of platform that he's giving to people, people whose voices have not been okay. heard, I think that's the success of the Yatra. The success of the Yatra is that when we were passing through Allahabad, just 30 seconds, when we were passing through an Allahabad, where I was, and I've, I've just come back from the Yatra after eight days, whether it was passing through Allahabad or a Banaras or a Rai Bareli or a, or a Lucknow, the kind of connect that we are having with youth, and they're looking at this Yatra, they're looking at Rahul Gandhi, with that one last glimmer of hope. They've given up as far as the Modi government is concerned. They don't believe okay. there will be justice. They don't believe there will be jobs as far as this dispensation is concerned. So on that count, I think it's a huge success. Rajdeep Sardesa, usually yatras that have succeeded going back in time have had a very definite purpose. Whether it's the Dandi Yatra or Adwani Ji's Yatra from Somnath to Ayodhya, uh, typically, you haven't had yatras so close to an election. Many, including the likes of Prashant Kishore, questioned the timing of the yatra, saying someone's giving Rahul bad advice. This is when he should be in headquarters, looking at the seats where they have a chance, focusing on seat distribution with allies rather than spreading himself thin. You know, I can count several things that went wrong, and we'll get into that in just a bit. But net net, do you think this yatra has been a success, or do you think it's actually backfired? I think, Rahul, the jury is out on that. I think the jury will uh, be able to pronounce a verdict only after the Lok Sabha election. Because let's be clear, this Yatra is taking place, as you just said, on the eve of the general elections. And if you are in politics and you are a politician and you are on the eve of general elections, you are expected to make every effort to win votes. Supriya Shinet may be right in saying that Rahul Gandhi is giving a voice and a platform to those who she believes have not been given a voice so far. She believes ideological commitments are being made about nyai that will be given to you, to farmers. All that is very well. But whether we like it or not, Rahul Gandhi's success in this particular yatra will be judged by the impact it has on voters' minds and hearts. And that we will know only in the next 12 weeks. We won't know it from opinion polls. We'll actually know it when the results come. So I think purely from an ideological perspective, you could argue that Rahul Gandhi is laying out some kind of an ideological platform for the Congress. But there are serious questions that still remain about organization, about vote-catching ability. Uh, so the... the no, uh, there are... Ms. Srinath, you were... Uh, let's be very clear... The fact is, Ms. Srinath, the Congress has shown, as we saw in the December elections, no sign of recovery in the Hindi heartland, which is why I said the jury is out. I will be more than willing to Can accept your view that the Yatra has been successful when I see what happens in May okay. of 2024. So, until then, all of what you say seems to uh, sounds to me please? that Rahul Gandhi, yes, is a valiant lone captain, but he is charting very turbulent waters Can I and the please Congress make a ship point? is struggling to stay afloat. Okay, Supri, I'll come back to you in just a moment. Let me go across and speak to the other guests and I'll come back no, to you no, after that. No, I need that. to make a very No, it cannot happen like this. Allow me, no, allow me to moderate point. this debate. No, that fader goes point down. Point. It cannot happen this way because others will have one guest speaking much more than the others. I want to go across to Zayed Zafar Islam. Zafar Islam, uh, Rajdeep says that we'll only know whether this Yatra succeeded or not once the Lok Sabha elections are out. The BJP has been levelling multiple allegations. For example, Rahul Gandhi giving a biscuit uh, which apparently belonged to a dog, to a human being. The human being said, well, it's my dog. Rahul Gandhi later clarified. So some of it is just, you've been firing from the hip. And some of it has really been Rahul Gandhi scoring self-goals, like asking journalists, tumhari jaat kya hai, tumhari owner ki jaat kya hai, which is like just, why in the world would anybody do that in today's day and age, ask people so openly about their caste? Uh, do you agree that at this moment, it's difficult to call out a verdict on the Bharat Jodo Nyaya Yatra? We'll have to wait for the Lok Sabha results to come out before we know whether the Yatra served any purpose or not. Zafar Islam. Well, Rahul, see, you have to analyze this Yatra from people's, from a common man on the streets and they're from their perspective. Then they view it 
two ways. One, either it's a picnic where Rahul Gandhi was not wanted in their own party and the senior leadership, whatever they want to make the dissent, he is always a bottleneck. So they wanted him to be away from them. They have sent him a picnic. That is one perception of the people. Second is, of course, as you rightly pointed out and you had spoken, that it has backfired. Whenever you do this kind of a stunt, when actually you know that the ground situation is not uh, supporting you, then it's, it's, it's this kind of a stunt they try, you attempt, and it, back, it, it always backfires. And here also it has backfired on him completely. There is no receptiveness. If, if at all, people were actually taking this Riyatra as a very positive from a, uh, and a very positive note, then their own people should have not left the party. So their own leadership is not, their leaders, senior leaders are not convinced about this Yatra. They feel that he's wasting time, he's wasting everyone's time. They do not call it as a political Yatra. This is a Yatra only for Naya Yatra, the uh, Bharat Jodo Yatra. Actually, there is nothing to Jodo. It is, uh, they are trying to Todo, Bharat Todo Yatra, and that is something which is not going down well with the people of this great country. So having said that, this Yatra, from our perspective, is nothing but actually it is he is trying to disrupt but he is he will fail com uh, uh, miserably because okay. people and uh, people understand that this kind of a stunt only to marginalize try attempting to marginalize bharti janata party in the eyes of the people will not work people know that there is a political party who who is the, who is there for okay. the last 10 years and served served the people and made india very very strong in the eyes of the global community, Ra Ra and that's the people love him. Rashid Kidwai, outside of what we are hearing from Suprashanath officially, what's your sense of the mood within the Congress leadership, outside of Rahul Gandhi? Uh, do they think the Yatra has been a success? Ha do they think it's ill-timed? What do they make of some of his intemperate outbursts, especially the attacks on the media, asking journalists about their caste? I mean, some of it uh, just sounds quite baffling. Why is any politician in today's day and age so openly invoking somebody's caste? He's looking to make a point, but is that point actually backfiring? Has the Yatra backfired or has it succeeded? Rashid Kidwai. I, I, Rahul, uh, job of political parties to win elections. Uh, party workers expect leader to, uh, you know, uh, to either increase vote share, vote percentage or uh, seats. The problem with Rahul Gandhi is that there is no definite defined role for him. He is not a prime ministerial candidate. He is not, uh, you know, he doesn't have a formal role either in the organization or in the India alliance. There are a lot of expectations from him. He's trying very hard, whatever he's been told to do by his advisors, etc., in putting a kind of, you know, attack on media, which is uh, which looks bad. Uh, the first part of Yatra was very high on optics. The uh, second part of Yatra is not even high on optics. So in that sense, it is slightly uh, in time. It is uh, it is it is it is uh, causing a lot of disquiet within the Congress, and we'll see the full impact of it when results are out. You think it's causing disquiet? You think that there is a sense within a section of the Congress that this uh, isn't working out? That in fact it's coming apart quite terribly for the Congress. That's very badly timed. And it's not going well? Rahul, uh, Rahul political party is, you see, the lo political loyalty is extremely transactional. There's been two elections, 14 and 19. There are a lot of factors. I don't blame Rahul Gandhi for it. He was not even a sort of prime ministerial candidate. But third time, you know, defeat, if it happens, uh, then that will make a lot of difference. And there's going to be a lot of disquiet uh, within the Congress. Let Suprashunath respond to this, that political equity is transactional. The Gandhis were on top of the Congress hierarchy because they were leading their party workers to power. If there's a big third defeat, uh, then the swords will be out within the Congress for Rahul Gandhi. I mean, because, for example, you know, he keeps attacking uh, Aishwarya Rai Bachchan. Uh, she was dancing at the Ram Temple or she was there. I mean, I was at that Pran Pratishtha. Katrin, uh, Katrina was there. Kangana Ranaut was there, Ashwarya Rai Bachchan wasn't. I mean, Abhishek Bachchan was there, Amitabh Bachchan was there. And he keeps making the same point again and again. It's not as if he made a mistake once and then backtrack. Somebody told him, boss, she wasn't there, don't name her. He keeps saying the same thing and people are watching, wonder what's going on. Why is he blaming someone who wasn't even there? No, I like your dismay, but your dismay is very disturbing. Because it doesn't emanate from a place of truth. So let me first put things a little bit in perspective. Rajdeep says that every effort should be made to win votes. What is this Yatra? This Yatra is a mass contact program. When political leaders go and address rallies, that's the way they, they take their message there. 
when Arshtak or uh, India Today is showing one ad after the other of the BJP, that's their way to communicate what they want to say to the voters. They're flush with funds. But guess what? In the last few days, look at where the narrative in this country is. The narrative in this country is that as far as the Chandigarh mayor election is concerned, the BJP has been found cohorts with the guy who killed the electoral process. Electoral bonds, big, big loot and organized plunder. India's farmers are at the border of New Delhi. A 21-year-old farmer has been shot dead last evening. I don't see the outrage. And that's the point Rahul Gandhi is trying to make. I don't see the outrage on joblessness. I don't see the outrage on prices. I don't see the outrage on representation. And to the two things that you spoke about, I'm glad you brought up Aishwarya Rai. It's a, it's a demonstrative thing to say that Indian media is too obsessed with non-issues, with non No, but she wasn't there. You could demonstrate that by saying that, that Kangana Ranaut was dancing. Don't. You're blaming someone who wasn't don't. even there. It's factually wrong. It's like a blooper, you right? You are not a speechwriter. Are you applying? Are you applying for a speechwriter? No, ma'am. Thank you, you very not? much. So never, never. Not me. at all. I'm here yes. as the Congress's official spokesperson. Yeah, don't. You may, you may mouth something else to somebody else. Please don't do it for Rahul Gandhi. I'm here to reply on his behalf and my party's behalf. Okay. As far as the Congress party is concerned, we are absolutely certain and we are absolutely standing with Rahul Gandhi when he says that Indian media does not show real issues. Where is the outrage on Indian media when a 21-year-old farmer is killed? The 700 farmers lost their lives last time around. Three farmers have lost their lives so far. Why is Satpal Malik being graded? Because he stands up and speaks against the Modi government. Why are you not talking about paper leaks? Why are you not talking about joblessness? Why is the Indian media so obsessed with non-issues? I think it's a demonstrative thing. And to the question that was asked, I was very much present there. We were crossing Raibareli to Lucknow. We, I know the, I, I know the reporter. I know him well. He works with a competitor of yours, India News. And he said, "Aapka, aapki job kya hai?" Is because there is no representation. Which editor in today's mainstream media belongs to SCST or the OBC community? Hey, aise koi jaat poochta hai kya? Come on, Supriya. Aise kaun jaat? It's very derogatory. Aap kisi ki bhi aise jaat poochte ho? Aise koi jaat poochta hai? Supriya, aapki jaat kya hai? Rajdeep, aapki kya jaat hai? Aise kaun poochta? Ye baat saal pehle hota tha. India has moved on from there. Aise sadak pe poochte batao. Tumhari jaat kya hai? Acha, iski samajh mein nahi aayi. Tum batao. Tumhari jaat kya hai? Aise kaun poochta hai? Rahul Kaval. Rahul Kaval. Rahul Kaval, don't sit there on your high pulpit and give me gyan. I come from rural India. It's very entitled for all of us, including myself, to sit here and say, I don't believe in caste. Caste doesn't matter in the 21st century. Guess what? There is very low representation for people who come from OBC, SCST communities. Why is that so? Why is the top, in the top 200, why is there not one CEO from that com those communities? Why is not one editor from that one community? They make up for 75% of population. They don't have representation. It's very rich and entitled for us to sit here, including you, to say, Aise kaun pushta hai aaj ke time mein? No, you may have moved on because you belong to the entitled class, including myself. I can turn around and say, okay. I don't believe in caste. Oh, that's very rich and that's very entitled. Na because people who have been denied their place under the sun... Ra Rajdeep, do you find this awkward? Do you find this odd, bizarre? Rahul Gandhi stopping and asking Rahul, people Rahul, to marry No, one, one second, Zafar Islam. Rajdeep, aise puchna, bhai. people are there from no. those communities in your team. Aap batao, bhai, jaat kya hai aapki? Rajdeep, aap ki kya jaat hai? Batao, bhai. Aise agar koi puche, do you think it's okay? Do you think it's appropriate? Or, okay, one second. Supriya, you've spoken enough now. Fader goes down. We'll come back to you. I promise you, we'll be as fair as possible. We'll come back to you. Rajdeep, batao, bhai, jaat kya hai? Rahul Gandhi puch rahe, jaat kya hai? Batao, patrakar ki jaat kya hai? Look. For several months, Rahul Gandhi has been raising the issue of the caste census of uh, what he believes is the discrimination against uh, OBCs, Dalits, tribals. That's, that's a political strategy that he has taken. I think the mode of communicating uh, is where the problem comes. You can, I think he has every right, as in fact uh, uh, has, has the other, uh, has the BJP uh, uh, to, to, to raise issues of caste and community. Look, Let's be honest. No, come the on, Rajdeep. Put out Stopping people midway, mid road, and saying, Apni jaat batao, apni jaat batao. Ye kaise ho sakta hai, boss? No, no matter what caste you come from, and this is not speaking from entitlement or position or from any high horse. Aise sadak chalte logo se jaat pooche, thi kaise ho sakta hai? Modi ji bolte, bhai, aray kaun sa upper caste man? This is completely absurd. Aise ja ke, I find it offensive for people to say,
अक्षय राजदीप जात बताओ ये क्या मतलब है you will recall that when when the bjp brought out or the modi government brought out its last cabinet when the cabinet was expanded they gave a list of in that in the note in the note that was sent to the media of how many of them were obcs in fact the bjp at every possible occasion makes the attempt to say look we've got 27 obcs in our cabinet and we've got more than 80 of our mps are obcs they make it a point to say look we have an adivasi who we have made the president of india does the bjp do that or not when ramnath kovind was made president they say ramnath kovind a dalit was made president this is part of indian politics i believe that rahul gandhi has a right to raise the issue of obcs dalits and tribals it's the manner in which you communicate of course it's his communication skills which perhaps come across particularly in this social no ma'am you must now wait which come across in this social media age frankly at times as somewhere uh, unable to bring in the kind of gravitas that is required or indeed to bring in the nuance that is required okay that sometimes goes missing and then you can clip 30 seconds and make him out to look rather foolish so i think that is where the problem lies the mode of communication but i do believe that this country has for a long time and will continue for a long time to have these debates on issues of caste no, and community no of course you can have a debate on the issue of Sorry? caste identity and community that is not the problem at all it is the manner in which this question is asked is it okay on while you're in the car to just ask random people what their caste is i mean this is not acceptable completely and i want to show you comment. two comments i'm juxtaposing Uh, what rahul gandhi said and did with how prime minister is trying to frame the same issue i don't want to take sides okay i don't want to be seen as taking a side i want uh, each of our viewers smart thinking sharp perceptive viewers to make up their own minds take a look at these two comments media ke aap naam kya aapka ha aap shiv prasad ji hain aapke malik ka kya naam hai aapke malik ka kya naam hai kya naam hai नाम बताओ नाम बताओ भाई मारो मत यार मारो मत उसको मारना नहीं है मारना नहीं है नाम बताओ उसका वो ओबीसी है नहीं वो दलित है नहीं वो आदिवासी है नहीं अरब पति है वो ये किसानों की कभी बात नहीं करेंगे ये दलितों की पिछड़ों की कभी बात नहीं करेंगे ये अपने अखबार में ऐसा कभी नहीं दिखाएंगे ये हिंदुस्तान का भविष्य है ये है इसको देखो अच्छी तरह पेपर लीक बेरोजगारी महंगाई ये आपका भविष्य है मेरे लिए देश की सबसे बड़ी चार जातियां हैं मेरे लिए सबसे बड़ी जाति है गरीब मेरे लिए सबसे बड़ी जाति है युवा मेरे लिए सबसे बड़ी जाति है महिलाएं मेरे लिए सबसे बड़ी जाति है किसान इन चार जातियों का उत्थान ही अगर भारत को विकसित बनाएगा और अगर चार का हो जाएगा ना इसका मतलब सबका हो जाएगा So you got two very different ways of framing the question of identity. I want to go across to Sanjay Jha, who comes across sharper. That you've been in the Congress, you you're seeing the point that Supriya is making and what Rajdeep is saying as well. Do you think it's being framed properly? Ultimately, it's about winning over public opinion. Is Rahul Gandhi doing it right, or is he actually hitting self goals? See, Rahul, there are two points here. Number one is that when any politician, any public leader hits the streets. and you know even rahul's worst critics will have to acknowledge and i think admire uh, the herculean effort that he's done earlier during the bharat na yatra bharat jodo yatra and what he's doing now now you know we can keep uh, you know getting into the granular details of the rhetoric and the style and the communication which is critical i'm not going to deny i think they matter i have always believed that in politics once you become a popular figure you lose your freedom of speech because everything you say will get magnified and amplified and rightly so and therefore you have to be choosy about the words you use because that's the way uh, people expect you to speak you know with a certain degree of decorum but can we deny rahul 
that at the end of the day, at the ground level, there are fundamental issues where I think the Narendra Modi government over the last 10 years has been nothing short of a mammoth disaster. Let me pick up from what you played just now about Narendra Modi talking about his forecasts. He talks of farmers. And look at the farmers at the moment protesting a young farmer killed and the farmer is not even allowed to enter the Razdhani. That tells you the blatant lie where Mr. Modi actually has pretty much an embarrassment for that he has to actually face up to. He talks of youth. I don't want to even repeat it. We all know India is actually at the moment in a crisis of epic proportions, which I think will lead to a dangerous social evil because of the rampant unemployment. He talks of poverty. I think India today is not just struggling with 230 million people living below the poverty line, Rahul. Look at the inequality in this country that we don't even talk about. He talks of women. I mean, this is the same party that did not even talk about a gang rape woman in Manipur for months. Mr. Modi hasn't even been to Manipur. We all know Bilkis Banu's rapists were released. Okay. And the women wrestlers were disrespected. So the fundamental point is the Congress has an opportunity and the India Alliance has an opportunity to convert this disaffection into an electoral vote. The one place where I will not agree with Supriya and I've been vocal about it even within the Congress is this is an ideological battle, yes, but please convert it into an electoral asset. Don't say, say it is a mass contact program. Go out and say with confidence, I'm here to win votes, I'm here to win seats. Because you want to protect your ideology, you want to bring back India to the democratic, secular society that it must be, you got to win the election. Okay, that Rajat Sethi, now Sanjay Jha argues, don't look at the granular details, look at the larger picture, which is the point Supriya also made. There is inequality. Rahul Gandhi is bringing it up there. It may not agree with your sensibility because it's very in your face. But the point that he is raising about the lack of representation amongst Dalits, amongst uh, lower OBCs, EBCs, MBCs, amongst uh, the journalistic community and amongst other high-ranking positions in life is, is not in, incorrect. The manner in which he is saying it can be argued, but what he is saying is not wrong. Let Rajat Sethi come into this. Rajat. Well, uh, using Rajdeep Ji's phrase when he said that the jury is out, let me correct him. The jury has gone back home. Uh, once Rahul Gandhi decided to have a 10-day uh, United Kingdom's uh, plan of action, wherein he's going to England, he's going and debating with uh, uh, with students in Cambridge University, perhaps he believes that uh, he's going to address uh, the uh, you know the real politics of Pichada and the Dalits sitting in Cambridge. Uh, this is the unfortunate part. Uh, opposition remains at its absolute another point. Uh, there is just no uh, uh, no recovery that I foresee from here onwards. Uh, we've seen that at a critical juncture when state after state, uh, your alliance partners are actually wanting and waiting for, you know, the entire leadership of Congress party to sit together and uh, remove the wrinkles in the alliances, form and announce the seat sharing, announce the candidates and go forward. He's busy in this yatra. And rightfully so, when he is in the yatra, his own constituency demands him. He has to move out of the yatra for four days, go to Vayanad, then come back. Timing is a big problem, A. B, he himself is uh, is not a Dalit, not an OBC. Why is he leading the Yatra? Why is Khargeji not leading being a Dalit? See, when you are raising issues around uh, caste underrepresentation, you can't be from a, uh, from a caste which is privileged. You do not have that plank with you to come in and talk about that because you genuinely picked up a spot which ideally Khargeji should have been leading that Yatra. You did not give him that. So, you know, there is there is no level of uh, uh, confidence. Okay. Let Supriya respond. You know, on the issue of timing, uh, Rajat Sethi says he's going off to uh, Cambridge. Now, whose vote is he going to win over there? Bang in the middle, just before election dates are announced, Rahul Gandhi breaks this yatra, goes off to uh, Cambridge. Now, even if he's doing that one interaction, I mean, you could have done it and come back the next day. He's instead gone for more than a week. Now, how is that good political timing and why is Khargeji not raising, not leading this yatra if this is really about Dalit identity and assertion? Suppression it. That's a silly, stupid argument and I will tell you why. Khargeji is 83 years old. Does anybody realize how physically strenuous oh, a yatra no, like this is? It's all it. very good to say. Rajat, let us speak. Rajat, let us speak. Rajat, how the yatra should be done. I did not speak in between. Give me the courtesy, otherwise I'm not going to let you speak when it's your turn. Give me the courtesy, I did not 
interfere while you were talking. It's a silly argument you've made. Let me bust it for you. So firstly, Kharge ji is 83 years old, extremely respected. He's our elected president. Unlike the BJP that issued a note after its national executive that Mr. Uh, Nadda will continue up until June uh, next year or this year. I don't know. It doesn't really matter because he's not elected. Kargeji, it's very physically strenuous. You do realize covering 100 kilometers a day is a very strenuous exercise. Kargeji regularly attends the Yatra when he has to make public speeches when we are doing this in various states. Kargeji is looking at the organizational things. Rahul Gandhi, after he finishes the Yatra every evening, has multiple calls and multiple meetings along with Kargeji as far as our organizational things are concerned, as far as allies are concerned. Which ally is waiting for? We just announced UP, we've just announced Delhi. So what exactly are you talking about? Forget about those things. And what's your source of information? Four days. He went to Wynad and I was in the Yatra, so I'm telling you, stop lying through your teeth because that's what the BJP and its ecosystem does. I don't know why, Rahul, you did not correct him. But he went to Wynad at 5 in the evening, reached at 11, Stayed there the night over, went and met people the next morning and afternoon, came back and joined the Yatra at 4 p.m. the next day. In 24 hours, he went back to his constituency, which was facing an animal man strife, and there were um, uh, tragic incidents that had happened there. No, why is he hey, going to Cambridge? Going to why is he going to Cambridge? On the 27th, on the 28th. Election I'm coming to that. I, I can see, I can, I can see the palpable impatience. I'm coming to you. 27th and 28th, he's delivering a lecture at Cambridge because he is a visiting fellow there. He's taking a break from the Yatra. 26th is when the Yatra takes a break in UP. 27th, 28th, he's there. He's back on the 1st and he joins the Yatra on the 2nd. Which, which seven days are you talking about? I'm not here to discuss days and dates. I'm no, no, but one second. Suppression, you've covered Stop elections. No, no, one second. One second. I, I want to make a point. No, you know, I got no, no. invited to collect an award in the UK, a very prestigious award, part of a fellowship I was uh, part of when I was growing up. I said no because we are covering the election. I'm not even fighting this election, we are covering this election. I said, whatever holiday or break I take, I'll take after the elections. Let's focus on doing a good job of covering the election. Is it not odd to take this break, to go to Cambridge, break your yatra just a couple of days before polling is announced? So for you, what may be a break or a holiday, like you said, is not a break and a holiday for him. I think it's very important that we should use every given platform, every given forum to talk about our ideology. To but talk those about guys can't fight. vote. The we Cambridge people can't the vote. About how Twitter has released, you know, Rahul. Rahul, it doesn't work like this. You've got to let me speak, otherwise I can leave the show. There are multiple other people who can do the show. You don't interfere with anybody else. Have the same patience with me. I'm telling you one last time, otherwise, you know, it's your show. You can do it without me. It's You've spoken more than anyone else, but Please go ahead. Make your point. Make your point. I think so, when you... Make your point. We have to use every given fora that's available to us. The fact that... People are not discussing a social media platform like Twitter. And because I hate social media, it disturbs me greatly. It disturbs me to the fact that X, or Twitter as it was formerly called, has issued a statement saying that they are being pressurized by the government through executive orders to actually block accounts and posts in India. They are now banning posts in this country. And they say that this is not freedom of speech and expression. This is arbitrary decision making. How come there is no outrage over it? Because those accounts, because those posts were showing the truth to the Modi government. Because they were putting out data. Because they were voices of farmers. That's what this government is all about. And which is why I think it's absolutely right for not just Rahul Gandhi, but anybody in the Congress party or anybody otherwise who has a oh, platform, who has a forum. Okay. So you've spoken enough now, Supriya. Supriya, give everyone a fair chance. Okay, you've spoken much. Okay. You've spoken. Uh, I have one question. Yes. Supriya, you speak. This is really unfair. I think everyone. No, no, one second, one second. Every, 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 everyone who's watching at this time would empathize that Supriya has spoken more than any, everybody else, and yet she accuses us of being unfair and not giving her enough time. That's really uh, not fair because she genuinely has spoken more than anyone else. Rajat wants to get a word in also, Zafar. Rajat, 20 seconds. Go on. You are not. You're not. Okay, her fader goes down now. Okay, Rajat, go on. Rahul, please understand, we are not interested in, in any Congress party sermonizing here. For past 30 minutes, she's speaking non-stop. Please allow other panelists equal amount of time to speak. Number one, she mentioned about the caste. Rahul Gandhi being an upper caste, does he not uh, have it in him to, or have it in his entire party to have any other leader than Kharge ji, who's at the lead? That itself is a reflection of the state of affairs in the Congress party. Where are the underprivileged leaders in the Congress party? Can, can anybody not else replace Rahul Gandhi and, and lead the Yatra? 
and she was talking about Cambridge. Let me let me tell you, uh, Jairam Ramesh himself had tweeted from 26 till the 2nd of March. He's not there in India for seven days. He's out there in UK. I want to genuinely understand what is he trying to hoodwink uh, the public into believing that he's there for some kind of intellectual exercise. Or is he going there and meeting his extra-territorial sort of friends to meddle into Indian election and Indian, uh, Indian domestic, uh, uh, domestic affairs? I really genuinely want to understand that what he's there for seven days for. Okay. Uh, uh, let Zafar Islam come in. Zafar wants to make a point. Zafar, Zafar Islam. I think their own senior leaders within the Congress party, they do not take him seriously as a serious politician. So... Even outside, people, they don't take him seriously. And even some of the psychophants within the Congress party, they want to project him that as a very serious leader. And he is, is raising issues of the common man. But unfortunately, the fact is that everybody perceives him as a non-serious leader. And whenever a child cries, he has been taken out or given some lollipop. That's what the Congress party does because he comes from the first family. He has to be sent on some holidays or some picnic or some somewhere away from the political leaders which are taking deciding some political issues. Mr. Kharge, everyone knows, he doesn't want to interact with him. And even though the remote is with Rahul Gandhi, still he feels very uncomfortable interacting with him because he doesn't align with his ideas. None of the senior leaders within the Congress party align with his ideas. That's why many of the senior leaders are forcing themselves to leave the party and join some other political parties because they know that they will not be able to serve the purpose okay. of being a politician, to serve the people and serve the country. Every every attempt of Rahul Gandhi is to break the society. And uh, Rajdeep said just now, uh, well, while he was speaking, he said uh, he called Rahul Gandhi as a foolish. I mean, I will not use those words of foolish and all, but uh, uh, he's entitled to use whatever he wants to use. But I will say that he is a non-serious politician. He doesn't know what to speak, when to raise issues what issues to be raised, and he doesn't know okay. the reality, the ground reality that he is not a popular leader. He is competing with a very popular leader who works for the betterment of the country, but for the betterment of society, for the welfare of the people. Okay, so what, what I want to do right now... And, ...and Rahul Gandhi, and he must understand. We've looked at the Bharat Jodo Nyaya Yatra and all that's gone wrong and right uh, in this Yatra in the past 40-odd uh, days. I also want to look at the alliances now in Uttar Pradesh, uh, the alliance being formalized in Delhi, it seems to be coming together. So there were apprehensions given what had happened in West Bengal, in uh, Bihar, that will Akhilesh also go away? Will Arvind Kejriwal also decide to ditch the Congress? It, is, it seems in these two states, the Congress and its allies are coming together. Take a look at this report. It is the first official seat-sharing pact of the India Alliance. After days of suspense and speculations, Congress and the Samajwadi Party have thrashed out Uttar Pradesh deal for the upcoming general elections. आपसी समन्वय से चर्चा से यह निर्णय लिया गया कि भारतीय राष्ट्रीय कांग्रेस यहाँ पर उत्तर प्रदेश में सत्रह सीटों पर चुनाव लड़ेगी भारतीय राष्ट्रीय कांग्रेस सत्रह सीटों पर चुनाव लड़ेगी और बाकी जो सीटें हैं तिरसठ उत्तर प्रदेश में वो समाजवादी पार्टी के राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष उन पर अपने प्रत्याशी उतारेंगे Congress's 17 seats in UP include the Gandhi Bastion of Rai Bareilly, Amethi, Kanpur, Saharanpur, Priyagraj, Maharaj Ganj and Varanasi. Sources have told India Today that it was Priyanka Gandhi Vajra who played a key role in finalizing the seat-sharing deal. Sources revealed that Priyanka initiated the conversation and spoke to Akhilesh Yadav after discussing the matter with Rahul Gandhi. The talks moved forward after the Congress gave up their demand for the Moradabad seat and instead asked for Sitapur, Shavasti and Varanasi. <laughs> Things seem to be falling in place with Congress and Ahmadmi too. The two parties appear to have reached an understanding on seat sharing in Delhi, Haryana, Gujarat, Assam, Goa and Chandigarh.
The signs of the Aam Aadmi and Congress arriving at an arrangement became clear when Arvind Kejriwal turned up at the lunch hosted by Abhishek Manu Singhvi, where he was seated next to Congress President Malik Arjun Kharge. Sources say that Congress seat sharing with JMM in Jharkhand has been finalized, and pacts in state like Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, and Bihar are in the pipeline. Bureau report, India Today. The alliances in Uttar Pradesh, potentially Delhi, Sanjay Jha, do they give the India alliance some hope? Or do you think it's too late that the momentum has shifted irreversibly because of what happened in West Bengal, because of what happened with Nitish Kumar going back to the NDA fold, that now it's very difficult mid-course to reverse this momentum? Sanjay Jha. Uh, Rahul, I tell you, conventional wisdom tells you that a week is a long time in politics. Looking at the very complex conundrum that is India, even a day is long enough. So I think anybody who's today trying to second guess the election or say that it is a done deal, I can tell you there are manifestations of insecurity. Uh, I, this election is really up in the air with an advantage to the BJP. I'm not going to deny that. But, you know, things can change very dramatically. Uh, I'll give you an example. When Nitish left, there was a major perception blow to the India alliance because he was the curator of the alliance who started it in the Patna summit. But I do believe that, you know, when you look at Uttar Pradesh, when you look at AAP and Congress coming together, and I believe Maharashtra is critical. West Bengal, TMC holding is critical. Tejasvi is already on the road in Bihar. You have no idea at the moment as to which way will these states really play out. And therefore, I'm going to say this, I'm going to put my neck out here, Rahul. I do believe that, you know, people of this country are far more discerning than we give them credit for. I think people have watched the mother of democracy being touted about several months ago, and then the Chief Justice of India saying okay. a mockery of democracy and a murder of democracy. So I do believe the perception shift will help the India Alliance. I think the bottom line is the Congress has to do the heavy lifting. If the Congress, which had a hit rate of just 8%, winning 16 seats against 202 seats where they're head on with the BJP, if the Congress even wins 50, I think you'll see a dramatically exciting result coming up. Okay. Uh, Rashid Kidwai, do you still see some excitement in the election or do you think it's now too late? Given what happened in uh, Maharashtra earlier, Bihar recently, yes, of course, there'll be some... Uh, coming together like there is in Uttar Pradesh, in Delhi, uh, potentially, but it's now essentially too late for a trend reversal. Well, Rahul, I think it is for the voters to decide, uh, and the Congress and India Alliance still have you know lot to do if they come up with this seats negotiation, seat adjustment. Mind you, this alliance with Mamta is not over, though she has said that it's uh, over, but it's not over. There are still their attempts are being made. So if they put some of the alliances in place, I, I don't think the BGP is going to walk away with this 2024 verdict. There are some a lot of hurdles are there. It is for the India Alliance to get stuck together. This kind of you know talking about media and the etc. and caste. I think this is a major distraction even for Rahul Gandhi. He should play politics as per his instincts rather than being ill-advised by his advisors who are, you know, who put him, you know, off track. There are a lot of things that he's saying and that he has not said before. So I find it a little strange. Like what? What do you find strange, Rashid? This whole, see, if Rahul had to say this thing, he could have said about, you know, the India Stock Exchange, the DRDO, there are several, you know, government institutions are there. Media is a very, uh, you know, small segment in that sense where you talk about, you know, the caste equations at all. The very nature of media industry is very different. Uh, so those points, I think uh, there are someone else who's pushing this agenda. And Mr. Rahul Gandhi is articulating okay. it. Okay, so I'm out of time. Rajat Sethi, 20 seconds. I'll give Supriya, before you come in, you the opportunity to have the last word. But Rajat Sethi, uh, the BJP's narrative was, loot guy, doop guy, it's over. At least in Delhi, in Uttar Pradesh, there is some semblance of the India alliance coming together. So it's not gloom, doom, the worst case scenario. No, it. Rajat. Yeah. I, I agree. I think, uh, you know, BJP still has to cover tough grounds in southern India. Uh, India Alliance is working pretty well, say, in uh, certain sections in South India, but not as much uh, as one had expected in the early days of the alliance formation. Uh, but look at uh, look at the India Alliance right now. I mean, overall, India-wide, it looks in tatters. They have barely met for six days uh, in the past 365 days since the formation of this alliance, almost. 
so uh, you know there is no amount of effort that i see coming in and since uh, the main glue was congress and the congress leaders are too distracted right now i believe that uh, uh, india alliance that wanted a leadership uh, come in uh, from the congress party uh, take gen genuine serious issues and lead it from the front okay. in every single step that synchronization Zaf zafar is islam last 20 seconds final attack go ahead uh, 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 rahul all i can say that uh, see as far as 2024 election is concerned it's a done deal as far as the nda is concerned it's a matter of whether it's 370 400 425 or 450 that kind of a number actually 400 plus is number something which we which people are debating about not that the who will win the election that is is a done deal is done and dusted okay. as far as this 2024 for election concerned mm -hmm. but also congress is not in a position to dictate terms with all the regional parties because they are much more stronger than congress in every every uh, uh, part of the country so congress whether rajat uh, whether uh, sanjay jha or supriya sarnet for that matter whoever thinks that it's not a done deal congress still can come up with some uh, uh, better uh, number of seats it is okay. impossible because supriya sarnet the, the, the bjp says the battle is only about whether the bjp gets to 370 or not the battle is not about whether they are winning whether 400 par and 370 or not that's the only battle uh, that people will be looking for out, looking out for and counting day final words suppression it ye 400 bc ki nahi ye lok sabha chunavon ki baat ho rahi hai it's so rich of the bjp spokesperson to foolishly say here uh, that rahul gandhi for him it's a picnic come and do it no come one day and join us and walk as much as he does or or traverse the country that he did last time and this time around and if you don't sit at home for the next 10 days uh, healing your uh, heels i will, you, i think you are talking about yourself i have one last thing to say rahul gandhi is walk. not relevant according I'm to the bjp to don't talk in between rahul gandhi so you're according to you are targeting me i'm fit enough to talk the reality is that you sat through a one hour show You need to worry about yourself. You sat through I mean, a one-hour you... show oh, discussing Rahul Gandhi. He puts out one tweet will, and your entire party gets into action from ministers and the prime minister. You the prime minister is obsessed with Rahul Gandhi. You, you are an extremely okay. foolish you speaker. Zafar, bye. Let, 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 10 seconds supriya i'm out of time uh, kaval the fader doesn't go down for the bjp it's gone down ma'am i'm the giving you ma'am the fader is already down some of these the are process. just some of these are just uh, tapes which you've recorded which you say the fader is down 10 seconds and then your fader goes down as well go on make your last point i don't i don't appreciate the language you use ma'am his fader is already gone down long before you say i wasn't patronizing i was stating the fact ma'am i was stating a fact the fader went down long before you said anything for islam is concerned Don't use words like tape. Use that with your team, where you don't have one OBC, one ST, or one ST. Don't use those words with me. I'm not your friend. I'm a guest on this show. Zafar Islam, you spent the entire show telling how insignificant Rahul Gandhi is. One tweet of Rahul Gandhi makes your entire government go in a tizzy. You spent the last one hour discussing Rahul Gandhi. That's how relevant he is. He is so relevant that the Prime Minister in Parliament, that Rahul Kaval doesn't remember, speak about his own caste. Why is the Prime Minister talking about his caste? Okay, the, so I'm out of time on this debate. You've heard different sides, uh, and as always. I don't wish to lean in one way or the other. To the extent that is possible in the polarized times that we live, we've given all guests an opportunity to make their point, and I leave it to our viewers to decide who they think came out stronger. Whether this yatra, which is one aspect of the election, served any purpose or was it ill-timed? You decide because you vote. makes you wish everything was as vibrant